All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to solve a beautiful problem that involves both algebra, geometry, complex numbers, and polynomials. Wow. And I would like to thank Ilya from Michigan State University for recommending this problem to me. So what does it say? It says, suppose A, B, and C are complex numbers such that the following identity is satisfied show that the triangle ABC in the complex plane is equilateral. First of all, let's simplify our work a little bit, and without loss of generality, we may assume that A plus B plus C is zero, which can be interpreted in different ways. Either you can say the average of ABC is zero, or even the triangle ABC has center of mass the origin. And why can we do that? Because otherwise, consider the following points. Consider the points A prime, B prime, and C prime, which are just translates of the original points. So A minus K, B minus K, C minus K, where K is the average of A, B, and C. So A plus B plus C uh, e over 3. And you may check, I will not do this now because it's a bit long, but you may check that A prime, B prime, and C prime satisfy the same algebraic identity as A, B, and C. And that would solve a problem because as I mentioned, a prime, B prime, C prime, they're just translates of A, B, and C. So if you translate this triangle to get the triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, then it follows by translation that uh, one triangle is equilateral if and only if the other one is. So if we prove the result for this triangle, it will follow for the original triangle as well. And it seems like a small identity, but it's actually very important for the next step. Because indeed, in the second step, I'm claiming the following. So remember identity a squared plus b squared plus bc squared was ab plus ac plus bc. I'm actually claiming that either part of the identity is zero. So for instance, let's show that in fact, a squared plus b squared plus c squared is zero. And for this, we need to use the fact that our, aver our average is zero. Because on the one hand, consider a, B, a plus B plus C and square this. On the one hand, by step one, since this is zero, we just get zero squared, which is zero. On the other hand, let's expand this out. Because this is A plus B plus C times A plus B plus C, which if you'd like, you just get a squared plus ab plus ac plus ab plus b squared plus bc plus ac plus bc plus c squared, which you can just rewrite as a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus two times ab plus bc plus ac. Now, in general, that would just be gibberish. We couldn't do anything with that. Except remember, the whole point of this identity at the beginning is that those two things are equal. We know that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to ab plus bc plus ac. So what you have is you have one term plus two times the same term. So x plus 2x just becomes 3x. So we get 3 times a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And going back this whole chain, or this whole chain lu, we get that this thing is 0. So in other words, 3 times this x is 0. So in other words, x, the original thing, would also be 0. Now, even though this is interesting, we will not use the ident this identity. Instead, we will use that, well, since those two are equal and this is zero, we will use that AB plus BC plus AC is zero. Just a reminder, now we know that AB plus AC plus BC is zero. Now, the next step is truly unbelievable and kind of like math and magic. You'll see why. Because let's consider the following function, the following complex function namely f of z 
It's simply z minus a times z minus b times z minus c. It's as easy as f of z. And remember, and this will be very important for the end, we know that f of a is 0, f of b is 0, and f of z is 0. That's why f of c is 0. So again, we won't need that right now, but very soon. But now, on the, on the one hand, f is this. On the other hand, let's expand out f. So what we know, and of course, you could use Vieta's formula if you'd like. So this becomes z squared minus a plus b z plus a b times z minus c, which then becomes, I believe, z cubed minus a plus b z squared plus a b z, and then minus c z squared plus a plus b times c z and then minus as easy as a, b, c, which then you can just simplify. You just get z cubed minus, I believe, a plus b plus c, z squared, and then plus, I believe, a, b plus a, c plus b, c, z, and then minus a, b, c. Now, again, in general, this is completely meaningless. And why would we waste our time on this? But exactly in this problem, everything now simplifies. Because remember, what do we know? a plus b plus c is 0. Because we said without loss of generality, the average of a, b, c is 0. And then, by what we've shown before, this is also 0. So in fact, this complicated function f of z is actually much easier. It just becomes z cubed minus abc. And then we'll see now why this is so useful. All right, so now f of z is just z cubed minus abc. And now remember the stuff I told you it's important. Well, a, b, and c make this equal to 0. So a, b, c are roots of this. So now what we know is abc solve z cubed minus abc is 0. Or in other words, z cubed equals abc. Or in other, other words, z cubed equals omega, where omega is just abc. And if you know some complex numbers, then you're actually done, because what happens, a, b, c are just roots of this, so they're kind of like roots of unity, except not, not always with one, and therefore they have to be on an equilateral triangle. But in case this was a bit too fast for you, let me um, tell you the details. So what do we know? We know that a, b, c solve z cubed equals to this fixed complex number omega. And now let's see where a, b, c are on the complex plane. On the one hand, you can just take um, the modulus of both sides. And what you get is the absolute value of z cubed equals to this fixed number omega. And so z would, the absolute value of z is just this fixed number omega to the one third. So in other words, and if you call this r, if you'd like, you find that a, b, c are on a circle of radius r. So maybe somewhere here. Maybe one is here, maybe one is here, maybe one is here. We don't know. And by the way, in case you're picky, sure, r could be 0, and that would be a degenerate uh, equilateral triangle, which is completely acceptable. So already we know that a, b, c are on a fixed circle, centered at 0 in radius r. But now we can actually say more than that, because we do have this equation. And now let's just take arguments. So again, consider z cubed equals omega. And now just take, if you want, principal arguments, or basically angles. 
And what we know is the angle or the argument of z cubed is the same as the angle of this fixed number omega plus remember to add multiples of me, so 2 pi m's. Right? So again, um, remember argument, the angle, it behaves like log, so this just becomes 3 times the argument of z equals to the argument of omega plus 2 pi me, so 2 me, and we then get argument of z equals argument of omega over 3 plus multiples of 2 pi over 3, so multiples of 120 degrees, and this is just a fixed number, let's call it theta, and what you get is, so the angle of z is just this fixed number plus multiples of 120 degrees. And let me show you by a picture why th this answers a problem. Because remember, what is z? It's basically a, b, and c. So what do we know? We know that, on the one hand, our vertices a, b, and c, they're on a circle of fixed radius r. And also, what does that tell us? It tells us that, well, if one of the angles, okay, if let's say a, b, or c has angle theta, so if one of the vertices, vertices has angle theta, the other ones, they're 120 degrees apart. So if let's say this is A, then we know that B must be maybe here. Either B or C is here, and maybe uh, B, the other angle is here. So this is, again, uh, 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and then 2 pi over 3. And by the way, of course, there is a degenerate case, if you'd like, I believe, if like A and B, they're equal or something, that, that would also work. All right, and then, if you notice, this configuration can basically only happen for uh, equilateral triangle. Because essentially, if this is 120 degrees, this will be 30 degrees, this will be 30 degrees, so that will be 60 degrees, so pi over 3, this will be pi over 3, and this will be pi over 3. So we have a triangle with angles 60 degrees, and that's just for equilateral triangle. And therefore, we're finally done, we find that the triangle ABC is in fact equilateral. How amazing is that, by the way? We started with some weird identities, and then this weird function z minus a times z minus b times z minus c popped up, and last but not least, we somehow got our result. Again, if you think math isn't exciting, I don't know if you watched till the end of this video. I don't know. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.